a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That is the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. They who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. A quote by Benjamin Franklin. What is up, homos? It's been a downer of a week, but I promise I'll try to put a smile back on your face with this brand spanking new episode of The Big Ass Podcast. This is episode number 20. Wow, damn, man, 20 episodes. Look at that. Look at that. We're on one, one episode away from 21, and then the podcast can legally drink. Won't that be a fun one? Maybe something special next week. We'll see. Well, I am, uh, again, recording on a Wednesday, as today is uh, Wednesday, June 15th, 2016, to be precise. And I think for the time being, this is going to be the uh, the new record day. It's working out better with uh, everyone's schedules here, so... Uh, expect podcasts from uh, going forward now to be released on uh, Thursday mornings. So there you go. Change it on your calendars, kitties, so you know just when to tune in to your old pal, Big Polly Z. Without further ado, let's sacrifice an adult beverage to the podcast gods in this week's edition of the Big Ass Beer of the Week. It was the greatest beer in all the world. This week's Big Ass Beer comes from Boulevard Brewing Company out of Kansas City. Today's selection is the Ginger Lemon Rodler. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, give a little read of the can here. On the back of the can it says, Sunshine season calls for a uniquely refreshing brew with added zing. Ginger Lemon Rodler is our take on the classic German cyclist. Bright and easy drinking with a tangy citrus touch and a touch of ginger spice. So, uh, yeah, Brewing Packers, a third street brew house, Cold Springs, Missouri, very fun. Well, it's, uh, it's a standard, uh, 12 ounce aluminum can, kind of a yellow swirly design with a red rodler in its, uh, script here. Let's crack it open and give it a taste. How's that sound, folks? I like the idea. Mmm, well, crack the can open. Uh, the scent itself is very citrusy, very nice. Can't uh, say I'm disappointed with that. So, let's give her a big old sip and tell me what I think. Oh, wow. That's really good. That's really good. Very lemony. Little hint of ginger on the back end. These would be fantastic for a hot day. After like mowing the lawn, whatever we're doing, you know, it uh, definitely would be a refreshing, refreshing brew for the uh, summer. It is a uh, 4.1% alcohol by volume. Uh, being a Rodler, it's a little actually on the high side. It's more similar to a Shandy in that regard. Flavor is awesome though. Super tasty. Um... These were ten ninety nine for a six pack at consumers, so they're not cheap. But um, man, they are they are good tasting brews. So I gotta give that two thumbs up. The uh, big ass seal approval to the Boulevard Brewing Co's Ginger Lemon Rodler. Go get them. Uh, go get yourself a six pack, boys, and enjoy. All right, and before we move on with things, let me uh, fire up a cigar. Now we go back to what works. The uh, Blackstone by Swisher uh, Red Wines. It's a, a tasty cigar. My my definite go-to uh, in the, the tipped variety of a cigarillo. So uh, that's what I'm rocking along with my Rodler. And let's get in the show. How's that sound? So how is everyone doing today? Good, I hope. I really do. I do hope so. I have had a lovely week since the last time we chatted. We moved a new used fridge into the house. Uh, so that's fun. We got now a bigger fridge. A uh, nice little side-by-side -side there. 
So that's going to increase the amount of room. Plus, that means I can bring the old fridge into the garage and have a big old kick-ass beer fridge. So, win-win there. Uh, let's see, we attended my godson's seventh birthday over the weekend. And uh, that was fun. Saw some family. Got to hang out with the kitties. And afterwards, I uh, had a fire over at my brother's house. So, got another bonfire in. Had one last Friday and last Saturday. So, it was a good weekend for fires. Drank my fair share of uh, the Lightning Kugel's Summer Shandies. Tasty beers. So that was nice. Hung out with some good people. Cracked, set by a nice crackly fire. It was all good. Then uh, Sunday we went and we checked out that uh, Rainbow Lake Resort uh, in Allegheny. No, we did not buy a campground. We took our $50 for sitting through the uh, sales pitch and got the hell out of there. Uh, they wanted, like, between six and eight grand to, uh, buy into their, basically, camping timeshare thing, and so, fuck that noise. It's insanity, but, uh, yeah. So, what else? Oh, we started watching The League on Hulu. Uh, a show I never got into when it was originally on, but watched the first season of it, and it's really fucking funny, so I think we're gonna stick with it, and, uh, be watching the old League there on TV. I'm impressed. Funny show. Good stuff. But I know, I know, you all are just waiting for me to get into uh, the Orlando situation, so maybe I should just, just roll right into that on this week's edition of The Big Ass News. News team, assemble! I heard the call, I am here. It is Polly Z with your Big Ass News. So, uh, yeah, Orlando, not good, not good at all, is it, folks? I'm gonna get a pull of beer for this. Yeah, so, Omar Mateen, ISIS scum, closeted homosexual, wife beater, and all-around douchebag, walked into Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Bright and early Sunday morning, or late Saturday night, depending on how you want to look at it. And, uh, shot the jerk up. Killing 49 people, injuring 53, and, uh, he died in that mix, too. So, if you want to count him in amongst the dead, make that a 50-50 split, dead and wounded. Um, I've seen reports anywhere from 200 rounds being fired by this jackass to 1,000. I find 1,000 rounds to be... A slight over-exaggeration of what one man can do and carry. A thousand rounds of ammo will weigh about 40, 50 pounds, so he wasn't doing that. If it was 200, then goddamn, his hit rate was insane. And uh, I also don't believe that's the case, so I'm sure the truth's somewhere there in the middle. So, yeah. Um, well, let's just see. The, the media the media has, of course, butchered this story and turned it on its head. Instead of a story about a radical Islamic extremist scumbag committing jihad on American soil, it has turned into a lone gunman, and the problem is guns. And I've been seeing a lot of this on Facebook, Twitter, from a lot of people who've never touched a fucking gun. These soft, faggy, tie-wearing individuals who sit in a cubicle on a daily basis and whose biggest thrill of their fucking week is to go out hitting the golf course over the weekend? I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear your fucking expert opinion on guns when the closest thing you've ever picked up to is a fucking Xbox controller while playing Call of Duty. It doesn't make you an expert. It makes you a fucking child. So shut the fuck up. Unless you have something valid to add to the goddamn conversation, which you don't. You're just a bunch of fucking little sad, uninformed posers. Who think because you can kill someone in a fucking video game you know about guns. Eat a bag of dicks, you motherfucking faggots. No disrespect to the dead actual queers. I'm using faggots in the derogatory schoolyard way, which is perfectly acceptable. I would never call an actual faggot a faggot unless he was being a faggot. If that makes sense. <laughs> So, yeah, it wasn't an AR, by the way, folks. Mm, was not an AR-15 platform rifle. No, no, it wasn't. It was the uh, Sig Sauger... Sig Sauer. Sorry, I can't talk. MXC, chambered in two twenty three caliber. 
and he had just recently purchased this weapon. And, um, that's all well and good. He must have, you know, used one of them, their gun show loopholes, right? He went down and someone illegally sold it to him. Clearly, that's how this lunatic got his guns. No, he went to a reputable licensed gun store and filled out what is known as a quote-unquote yellow, which is the form you have to fill out to purchase a gun. And what the gun store owner does with this after you, you fill out the yellow is he takes it back into an office or there on the floor, picks up a phone, and calls the number on the yellow, which connects you to the FBI. The FBI then asks pertinent information off the yellow and runs a background check. Usually it doesn't take long. I've, I've sold guns. I am a, well, was a registered FFL licensed gun seller. So I know how this works. And after a few short minutes, you will come back with one of three responses from the FBI agent on the other end of the line. Either approved, delayed, or denied. With no explanation for why any of these things happened, just a number that the individual can call if they are delayed or denied to find out what's up. The FBI cleared this individual to buy the gun on that day. I only bring this up because... Omar Mateen was thrice interviewed by the FBI uh, in regards to his ties to terrorist organizations and Middle East scumbaggery, Muslim jihadism. Every time the case is basically timed out and um, they open a new one and they never got anything enough to nail him down uh, with a crime apparently. And so this is where it gets tricky. We don't want the federal government to be able to put your name on a list and then prevent you from buying guns. But there is wiggle room there. They could have delayed it. If they would delay the sale, which I think you have to 72 hours before you get an approval or denial, they could have done that. That might have saved lives right there. He might have been pissed. He might have done something else. He might have just used that suicide vest that he was packing and you know still committed an atrocity. Who knows? But the same organization that was investigating this asshole also said he's good enough to buy a rifle in Florida. So, I don't know what to do here. Other than to say, profiling's okay, and maybe he should have been denied. Maybe they just should have given the old denial to the gun seller and let Omar fucking stew about it and figure it out on his own. Should this be happening to every person? No, I don't want the government to be able to do that. But there's a fucking gray area. There's some discretion, which they did not use. And they might be using this to make a point. See, now we got anyone on the terrorist watch list or anyone who's had an interview with the FBI automatically can't buy guns. No, 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 we don't want that. This is the way they like to twist and turn things to make it negative for law-abiding citizens. But so, yes, scumbag Omar Martin. Muslim extremist, jihadist, Omar Mateen, purchases his guns with the help of his shitty, shitty wife and uh, ammo, apparently, and straps himself up. Apparently, he goes on a little scouting trip with his shitty, shitty wife. And, uh... Depending on what you believe, picked Pulse Nightclub because he's strict Muslim and anti-gay therefore and well in Muslim countries if you find out you're gay they just either stone you or throw you off a fucking building so you know he's trying to do what uh, is best especially because the uh, the imam there in Orlando because it's good to have fucking imams in a mosque in any goddamn US city but was earlier this year preaching about how the sins of the fags basically must uh, be righted by death yeah and this shit had this shit had bought in hook, line, and sinker. So, right before the shooting started, he dials up 911 and uh, pledges his allegiance to ISIS. Then the shooting begun. And, um, Jesus Christ, I mean, like 300 people in this club, and he, he whacked a third of them, so fuck me, sideways. In Florida, there's a law that uh, any business whose primary function is serving alcohol is a uh, no-carry zone. No no guns allowed there. 
so the only armed person was a, a doorman, I believe. Uh, I guess he was ineffective at uh, getting that sidearm out and putting it around in this asshole because this asshole stuck around for several hours in that building holding hostages after he ran himself dry on ammo or whatever the fuck he did. So, yeah, he he's dead, and now it's, instead of having a, another talk about Muslim extremists, Islamic extremists, and the detriment they are to a civilized Western society, we're talking about guns. Namely the AR-15, which wasn't even fucking used in this, and none of you assholes out there who have never touched one shouldn't get to talk about it. You lose that fucking right. Fuck you. One, AR doesn't stand for assault rifle, you dipshits. No, it doesn't. It's armor light. Hmm, isn't that fun? Yeah. Just the company that made the first one. And an AR is not made. There's not one big AR factory somewhere in, like, Colorado just pumping out AR-15s. It's a style of gun made by a slew of manufacturers. They're not cheap. They're not readily available. You need, on the low end, 800 bucks, 750 800 dollars On the high end, two grand. This is not the go to Walmart and buy a $120 shotgun type shit. It's a pricey machine. It takes a little bit of work getting to know how to use it. A little bit of practice is required, especially to do quick mag changes and shit. And the gun never jammed on them, which is amazing. I mean, I know maybe the SIG is a smoother uh, operating system than the AR platform, but I've never gone out on a day of the range and plinking and not had the gun jam up at least once or twice on me and choke on a shell casing. So, incredible. But now we see... The vilification of the AR all over the place. Read an article today online about one of these liberal fruity journalists who went to a range to find out firsthand what it's like to shoot an AR-15. What did he say? Well, that it was like shooting a bazooka. Yes, a bazooka, because he's a fucking child and learned all his gun names from G.I. Joe in the 80s. The recoil bruised his shoulder. I guarantee you, you could put an egg in between the AR stock and your shoulder and fire it, and the egg would survive. The gun has, what, less than um, five pounds per square inch of kick or whatever, whatever mythbuster way to do it. The gun's a little, it's a pony. It doesn't kick at all. It shoots a very tiny, tiny bullet very fast. This is not a whomper of a rifle. If anything is loud, it cracks. It's a supersonic round, so it makes a loud bang when that little tiny 22 caliber bullet comes out of the barrel. But, um, yeah. So this fruit is uh, talking about how after shooting an AR for just several minutes, he's now suffering from what he considers post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, oh, fuck him sideways. If you're that weak of a human, then I guess a fucking car backfiring or a fucking mortar rocket going off on a 4th of July must just send him into a fucking diabetic coma. Goddamn queer. But assholes read this. Assholes who have never touched a real gun in their life, whose only fucking exposure to guns is movies, TV, and fucking video games, and they think that these are now the scariest goddamn things on the block. And I have no respect for these people. Done. I'm done with them. I am... Ted Nugent said it a couple years ago when I was at the NRA convention that you can only do so much for them and then you have to cut these people out of your life and leave them. It's trample the weak. It's done. You run over them. If they don't want freedom and liberty and they don't want protection and they don't want to know the truth, fucking leave them to die. And that's what I'm now doing with people in my life. Don't need this shit. Fuck you. You're done. You're dead. Gone. Bye. I'm not here to save you anymore. I'm not here to protect you. To even try to preach to you anymore. Fuck it. I don't care. I hope one day when some of these liberal assholes that I used to know are sitting there in the fucking mall or at Starbucks or some other fruity fuck place that a gunman walks in and just fucking kills them. And I'm not going to shed a tear for him. I'm not. I just don't care anymore. So, fuck them. Fuck this asshole. Fuck ISIS. 
But uh, do not, do not, do not believe an ounce of what the mainstream media is is telling you. I'm still really hung up on how this was one person. I really find it incredible to believe that one man did all this and that not, not one group of people in that club nutted up and just rushed the fucker. I mean, unless he made it very clear they had a suicide vest on and he was going to push the button. But... I don't know. I wasn't in there. I don't know. I'm guessing there was security footage, so that should be fun when that's, you know, declassified in fucking 20 years to see what actually happened. I mean, there's right now rumors that some of the eyewitnesses survivors. I know that it's stressful and shit gets confusing. Claiming there was at least two shooters. Claiming that the doors were barred from the outside. And they couldn't escape, so... What is the truth? I don't know, man, but I don't think that it's all that it's, uh... It's not as black and white as, as what is being shown by any means. Not at all. Not to mention his fuckface's father is an Afghan politician with ties to the White House. And that this shit brick was working security for a private security company that also had ties to the White House. Or at least the federal government. Odd how that works out. He was a flunk out of uh, the police academy. Not to mention... Sounds like a closeted homosexual, so... But when it boils down to it, he was an Islamic extremist. He was a jihadist. He is the enemy. And he attacked an American city. He brought terror. He did exactly what the ISIS assholes are preaching them to do. ISIS warned that Florida was going to be hit three days before the attack. So, for everyone to say that this was one unhinged asshole that had too easy access to guns, you, you're just, you're, you're fucking dumb. Not, again, just, not even preaching to you anymore. Fuck you. I was say go put a gun in your mouth and pull the trigger, but we know you're too queer to even pick up a fucking gun, you soft little pussies. So, I'm done. It just gets me angry, and it's not going to be a fun podcast, and it's not going to be enjoyable for probably anyone to listen to me ranting about this. But, uh, yeah, I think Dandy Donnie Trump just, uh, just probably spiked up a few more notches on the old polls there, because he's the only one who's willing to actually say what the fuck the problem is, and is willing to do something about it. And that's right, every fucking refugee from those shithole countries needs to be screened, screened again, and then told to get the fuck out. We don't want you. You contribute nothing, you camel-fucking, goat-raping asshole. Get your fucking 80 goddamn point IQ, your shit-covered hand, and your fucking sick mental inbred brain out of our country. We don't want you. There's no reason. No reason to import the poor, desolate scum from halfway around the world when we have enough of them flooding over our fucking borders in Mexico. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that, man. Fuck this. My heart goes out to uh, the families of the deceased, Milo and uh, Gavin McInnes down there today giving a speech right at the site of the shooting. That's some real media right there. So, you know, find guys like Milo Yiannopoulos and uh, Gavin McInnes online. Read what they have to write. Read what they're reporting. The alternative right media is where the actual fucking news is coming from now. Guys like Alex Jones isn't crazy anymore, man. Alex Jones... Pretty dead fucking spot on, so. Man, and just, yeah. Stay aware of your surroundings. And if you see something, do say something. Remember that whole thing after 9-11 where everyone was vigilant? Bring that back. Don't protect these scumbags. Call them in. Have the FBI look at them. And then uh, send them to Club Gitmo. That's what I say. So, uh, I'm just gonna move on before everyone else turns this off. Oh, and I guess in other news, God wasn't done kicking Orlando in the nuts hard enough because then uh, last night, a gator fucking grabbed a two-year-old on the banks of a pond and uh, ate him. And that made national news, probably because every media outlet in the world was uh, down there to see it. I know people get taken by gators every once in a while down there, and it's usually not national news, but because there's a billion cameras going on there, they found uh, that to be newsworthy for the nation, so... Sorry about that, man, but you're on the wrong rung of the fucking food chain. Don't let your kids 
Played by alligators, I guess, would be my recommendation there. So look at that. I even got some gator news in. The third gator story in the last couple of weeks here. So that's good. That's not, not really an uplifting story by any means, but um, it is the news. It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. You should have respected my authority. I cannot confirm this at this moment, but that is what I'm being told. Part of the 911 call that Omar Mateen made minutes before the shooting had begun. I will uh, go back to the big ass news desk and try to verify that in the coming days and weeks as the story unfolds. And that's the way the news goes. So let's move on to something else, folks. Yes, let's. And uh, how about we do that by moving on to big ass sports? It is indeed time for Big Ass Sports, and we got uh, lots of hockey news to lead the uh, sports off with today. One, I got to congratulate your Pittsburgh Penguins, as they are your 2015-2016 Stanley Cup champions, as they have defeated the San Jose Sharks. So, Sidney Crosby gets his name on the Cup yet again. Good for him. Uh, sad news in the hockey world also uh, this week as Gordy Howe has died completing the uh, Bad Shit Coming Threes trilogy with Kimbo Slice, Muhammad Ali, and Gordy Howe. So that sucks. Another legend gone. And then the other big hockey news would be that uh, the uh, league has approved an expansion team and they are expanding to Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. The NHL is going to be the first major sports league to move a team to the gambling mecca. Expected to start playing 2017-2018, pending, uh, I guess, an ownership vote. Which means we're going to have an expansion draft and all sorts of happy horse shit coming up. So that should be fun. Um, I know I did a sports podcast a while back with Robbie. And uh, we talked about... What we thought of moving the team to Vegas, and I'm all for it. I think it's a good thing. It's a big market. Give them sports. Why not? So we'll see how that goes. I don't see gambling, illegal gambling, really affecting the game all that much there any more than what affected anywhere else in the country. Gambling's going to happen wherever you're at, so not a big deal. Uh, the NBA is uh, still sorting out their grand champion. As we got Game 6 looming, Golden State leads that series three games to two. LeBron trying to fight back after having a monster game in Game 5 where he dropped like 42 points or some shit. So we'll see if LeBron can uh, get Cleveland a championship. For sure as fuck no, the Browns won't be doing that. <laughs> Nor probably will my, uh, my beloved Cleveland Indians. So I guess this is their best shot. We'll see if they can even the series and force a Game 7. And then uh, NFL news, uh, the big one this week was Brashad Perriman, the receiver from the Baltimore Ravens, sat out his entire rookie season uh, due to a knee injury. And in OTAs, he was thought to have had an ACL tear and uh, was going to miss his second season and possibly doom his career. Uh, he got his knee scoped. They don't need to reconstruct it. They said the knee looks good. So they're going to rest up, and he's going to hopefully be ready for a start of the season. So I like him fantasy-wise. He's a guy on a lot of my radars in my, uh, in my dynasty leagues. I like his skill set, so we'll see if he can get healthy and uh, do something impactful for that Ravens passing games, which is in desperate need of a spark, especially if uh, Steve Smith Sr. is still not 100%. So that should be interesting. So, yeah, man, let's uh, roll on to the old fantasy corner. How's that sound? And uh, in this week's edition of the fantasy corner, I just want to kind of go over a couple draft strategies. As drafts are starting to pick up, especially when it's getting to July, uh, you will see the old fantasy drafts happening a bit more frequently. One is the zero running back strategy. You'll hear about that. And what does that mean? Does that mean don't take a running back your entire draft? How could you possibly do that? No, but what it does mean is not taking one early. In those first three rounds, not taking a running back. 
and loading up on receiver or tight end in the case of Rob Gronkowski. That's pretty much the only way you got to pull the trigger on him in the first or second round. Otherwise, yeah, it's receiver. Go receiver strong. And with the league increasingly becoming a pass-happy league and most teams going running back by committee, to waste an early pick on a running back is is dangerous, basically. When you can find guys in the, the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds that can do an ample job and that the cost versus risk here, the it's it's better to get two or three stud receivers early in those rounds. They're going to get you more points. They're a little more insulated to the ups and downs of the offense and generally not as injury prone. So um, I kind of like this strategy. If I don't get my hands on, say, a Lev Bell or an AP early in a draft, I'm going to wait. Um... And then go into that next tier of running backs. Something like Lamar Miller, Latavius Murray are guys that I like. I should have added, I'm sorry, uh, Todd Gurley into that top tier. So that would be my top tier would be those three guys all by their lonesome. So you'd be looking at uh, missing out on Lev Bell, Todd Gurley, Adrian Peterson. But then the next round of guys, you get, you know, like I said, Latavius Murray, uh, Shady McCoy. Even wait a little bit further and get an aging guy like a Matt Forte. He can still do things for you. So... I like this strategy personally. And then last year I started to adopt also the late round QB strategy in my redraft leagues. And that is also you wait on a quarterback and you wait until the God blessed last minute. And uh, last year it happened to be that people were really down on Cam Newton. So he fell to me in a couple drafts in the ninth, 10th, 11th round. I also was able to get guys like, Andy Dalton late, Ryan Tannehill, Phillip Rivers. These guys will be sitting there late in your drafts. So you don't need to necessarily waste that high pick on Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. As fun as it is, I love having my, my quarterback on my team. But if you want to win in fantasy, it's you got to sometimes not play homer ball. So waiting on a QB till later in the draft and therefore adding more skill positions ahead of him. So instead of wasting your second or third round pick on a quarterback, you now ended up with another receiver. Another stud receiver. With a quarterback that's still going to put you up points every week. So I like that strategy going forward as well on um, anything that is not uh, a QB heavily weighted league. Some leagues do change your scoring situation. My leagues, for one, I do weight quarterbacks a little more heavily. So the more heavily weighted scoring the quarterback is the earlier you're going to want to take them. But in a standard type league, especially in a redraft, uh, standard scoring type league, wait on your quarterbacks. Take them on the, the back half of the draft, and you're going to do all right. And you're going to end up uh, being better off loading up with uh, some skilled, highly skilled, elite receivers. And then maybe you can punch a ticket on a running back early, and it's not going to affect your draft as much if you still did want to get one of those stud RBs. So... That's Fantasy Corner for today. I'm going to wrap that up. And this is a sports news sidebar here, a big-ass digital uh, sidebar. Robbie is uh, taking a little hiatus from Sports Untamed. He's going to retool the show and relaunch it in a couple weeks. So when that happens, I will let you know. But he is not giving up on this. He just wants to kind of get his head straight and get a he wants to get a different vibe for the show. And I'm going to hang with him and let him do that. So when that comes back on, I will let you know. Otherwise... Stay right here. Stay tuned to the Big Ass Podcast for all your Big Ass Sports news. Okay, terrific. All right, so what else we got here? What else we got here? I'm going to throw a book recommendation out for you. Uh, the Mr. Mercedes book this is the title of the book uh, by Stephen King, part of a three-book series in the Mr. Mercedes series. I'm almost done with it, and it's a really good read. I uh, would recommend that one. You can pick it up cheap kind of at these... Uh, like at a Big Lots or an Ollie's or something like that, they're they're sitting there now for a couple bucks for the paperback. Really good read. Highly recommend that y'all go grab that book and uh, give her a reedy read read. And uh, what else? What else we got going on here? Oh, this weekend is Father's Day, so hopefully all of y'all you gotta go out there and spend some time with your daddy. O. we are going to be. I mean, I'm later gonna be going over to my father's house on Saturday, cooking him a. Lovely seafood meal consisting of clams and uh, fish and whatnot, and uh, bringing up some beers and such. And then Sunday, I'm going to be doing what I do with my father every year since I'm old enough to remember and going to the annual uh, Alexander Fire Hall Father's Day Gun Show. So that's what I'll be. And I'll be picking up some ammo for 
my 30 caliber carbine, which is back to working order, thanks to my father's gunsmithing skills. So it's been off on the shelf for a couple of years. Finally able to track down the parts for that nice little vintage shooter. So I'm excited to get that back in my hand. So I'll pick up some 30 cal rounds and go blast some off this weekend, maybe. And that'll be fun, fun, fun. And, uh... How can I forget? We gotta get in some sort of a Game of Thrones recap here, don't we, folks? We certainly do. We got brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them. Yes, Tyrion. Let's. It's uh, this week's big ass Game of Thrones review. So, in uh, this past episode, uh, we got to see what happened to little Arya as she was. Last scene getting stabbed up by the wave of the faceless men and chucked in a river. Well, she sought refuge at the uh, actress's house, the uh, one who was playing Circe in the play. And uh, she got patched up, given a little milk of the poppy, slept it off. Apparently her gut healed up enough that she was feeling better. Um, one of the faceless men, the waif, I believe, uh, yes, it was the waif, <laughs> busts into the actress's house. Murders her good, and uh, Arya's on the run again. Her and Arya have some crazy chase scene through Bravos. Arya finally ducks into a little uh, side room, a little like a uh, shelter. Well, it looks like purposely leaving a blood trail the entire way so the waif wouldn't lose her. She's crouched down and cowering as the waif approaches. That is when she pulls out needle, slices a candle off, and stibbity stab stab. Ends the waif, cuts her face off, and brings it back to the Temple of the Faceless Men. So, that was pretty badass. She then tells, uh... I don't know what the fuck that dude's name was. But, uh, the original Faceless Man that she met much earlier in the, uh, the book and show. That this girl does have a name. Her name is Arya Stark of Winterfell. And she be going home. He looks befuddled. And, uh... She's now headed back to Westeros. So, that should be fun. In Westeros, uh, the, yeah, the, the Stark childrens are having a hard time recruiting anyone. Jaime lays siege, sort of, to uh, Riverrun. The Blackfish gets murdered uh, at the end there. but uh, So we'll see. Edmir fucked him over. He's a, a weak douche in the show. I don't like him. His character sucks. In the book, he treated his battle a little bit better. He actually bought time for the Blackfish to escape. So, in the in the show, he turned weasel and got his uncle killed. So, I don't know if they're going to join the fight. I think that his men, maybe, maybe he's going to feel guilty and they're not going to execute all his men and they will join the Stark army to take on the Boltons. But that's what's shaping up next week, the Battle of the Bastards, they're calling it, as Ramsay Snow versus Jon Snow leading their respective armies uh, for the race to Winterfell. So, there's going to be a big-ass battle scene. So that should be fun to watch. Other news, uh, Tyrion's plan to uh, get things kosher in Marine and have the slavers back off backfires. They start firebombing the city and killing everyone and taking the slaves back. And uh, just as things are looking bleak, Daenerys shows up uh, with Drogon. So I'm guessing that Drogon's going to burn up some ships and shit and she's going to yell at Tyrion. <laughs> For fucking up her city. Uh, Varys went off on some secret mission. Probably back to Westeros. To, uh, God knows why. So we'll see what happens there. But the show is shaping up good. I have a feeling that uh, the show writers are going to finally give us a, an up. Instead of a down here at the end of a season. And I think that the Starks are going to win their battle. Versus the Boltons and get Winterfell back. We shall see. But that's the way I'm feeling. Uh, down at King's Landing, King Tommen, uh, with the religious sect far, far up his ass, made a decree that no more is trial by combat an acceptable way to uh, judge a man of his guilt or innocence, which means Cersei's fucked and her undead monster mountain uh, can uh, not defend her. But he is a big undead bastard. Some of the uh, the... I don't know, the, the Order of the Seven, whatever the fuck, uh, tried to attack him, put a big spiky axe thing in his chest. Doesn't hurt a big zombie monster, and he fucking killed a dude. So, they got him. Uh, Gregor Klingon there, and uh, 
Sandor, his brother, the Hound, is now back with the Beric Dunderaden, the Lightning Lord, the one who can bring people back, the original, like uh, before we met Melisandre, the one who was supposed to bring back Caitlyn Stark as Lady Stoneheart and uh, hang a lot of people and kill a lot of people for turning on her. But instead, uh, you got the Hound there murdering off some of the uh, the bad bandits who sliced up the seven little sept there, whatever the fuck. So we'll see if Gregor, the Hound there, makes his way into any of these battles or down the King's Landing to, to fuck shit up. Jamie's having the crisis of conscience. Doesn't seem like he's feeling too good about his shitty life and how everything turned out, but... He pledges that above all else, he's going to fight for his sister and whatever she says goes, basically. So, two episodes left. Big battle coming next week. Bran was absent from this episode, so I'm thinking he'll probably be in that last one. And maybe we'll get um, some clarity on the Tower of Joy and see exactly who uh, Liliana was whelping up there. I believe it's going to be Jon Snow, a baby Jon Snow. So, we shall see. At least we're probably going to see, not the inside of the chamber, but young Edward Stark carrying a baby back down, and then we'll know that Jon Snow is, in fact, part Targaryen. So, that'll be fun. Everyone tune in next week. It's still, even though it's not the book, it's still a damn good show. Best thing on TV, I think, so check it out, folks. I do not have a big-ass question of the week for you, because no one submitted it. I mean, come on, folks. I know that, uh... The Facebook feed's been down, but uh, the, the the episodes are up on YouTube. I gained another new subscriber this week, so that's fun. So hopefully folks out there are listening, sharing it, exposing new people to this. That's what I want. And I want to know what you think. So obviously comment directly on the video of the podcast, the, uh, the audio or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And uh, let me know what you think. Or contact me on Facebook at Big Ass Digital. On Twitter at Big Polly Z. On Instagram, Polly underscore Z, and both those Pollys are spelled with an I-E. So follow me there, get at me, talk to me. Then on Snapchat there is P-E-Z-981. You'll get an early glimpse of the Big Ass Beer of the Week and all that fun, happy horse shit. Or, of course, you can always email me, BigAssDigital at Yahoo.com. Any and all feedback is appreciated, folks. Fucking get at me. I mean, I know I just went on a whole ranty rant here on the, uh, the gun debate and all that shit. Hit me back. Hit me back. Let's sit down and fucking talk. But uh, Or agree with me. I like that too. That's always good. <laughs> so hit me up there. I appreciate it. If you would talk to me. Uh, I think we still got the GoFundMe thing going on. Look for uh, Big Ass Digital on GoFundMe. If you want to sling the podcast to five bucks, ten bucks, two bucks, a million bucks, something. Sling us a few bucks. Uh, we're going to upgrade some equipment and uh, get some stickers made and shit like that. So... Feel free to go on uh, GoFundMe, look for the big ass digital thing there, and check it out. And yeah, what else are we got going on here? Of course, we got some reads. I can't forget that. First off, we got Emily's A to Z crafts. She can make anything from A to Z. Uh, specializing in crocheted and baked goods, but she also does sewing, which she just got a, a sewing job this week, so. People are still finding her, but we need more. So find her Facebook page. Share the shit out of it. Go find her uh, Etsy shop. And then, you know, like I said, light catering, desserts, sewing, chocolatiering. She does it all. So make sure you get at her. You can find her at uh, Emily A to Z Crafts on Etsy. Or uh, email her, eazcrafts at yahoo.com. Or just like I said, search Emily's A to Z Crafts on Facebook and uh, hit her up. I'd appreciate it, folks. Thank you. Number two, Happy Guru Tattoo Butter. It is your vegan tattoo and piercing care. Uh, so learn more about that at www.happygurutattoo.com or learn about all their fabulous skincare products, including their newly released vegan sunscreen at happygurulovesme.com. And, of course, a shout-out to uh, Rob Holland and Ovi Wolf of Stainless Custom Tattoos there in Dallas. Still awesome dudes. Still got to give them some love. Everyone who sees Emily's Groot tattoo is uh, still just in awe of it. So, awesome dudes. Again, uh, search the social medias for uh, Bad Stainless to see a lot of Rob's work or Ovi Wolf and see what that man is doing as well. Both cool dudes and great artists. And uh, lastly, my artist here is uh, Dennis at the Tattoo Den. 
Tattoos by Dennis on uh, Facebook, man. So, yeah, look up the Tattoo Den on Facebook. It's located at 2111 Transit Road in Elma, New York. So, again, just do the Facebook search for the Tattoo Den. You will find Dennis, and you can see his uh, his recent works, his portfolio. I'm always sharing his stuff on uh, my personal Facebook page, so definitely check it out. And if you need a little ink therapy, most certainly hit up Dennis and let him know that Big Paul Easy sent you. Thanks. And, of course, uh, keep checking back and seeing everything that is getting done here with the Big Ass Digital Network. Like I said, Sports Untamed taking a little hiatus, but they will be back. Couples Love Fantasy with Paul and Emily is still coming soon, and it is coming soon. I promise you, we will get a podcast out to you sooner rather than later. And, like I said, uh, the GoFundMe page, go find that. Sling me some shekels. That would be fantabulous. So, yeah, man, a little bit short episode, but I kind of burned myself out early on this one, and uh, I don't want to drone on about the same shit that was on my mind, and it is infuriating. So, yeah. Be sure to tune in next week. As I said, we're moving times, recording Wednesdays. Podcast will be posted bright and early Thursdays, so be sure to check that out. Uh, Follow us on Facebook, and, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That will be awesome. Check out all of my fine sponsors. Give them some love. Let them know that uh, you heard about them right here. So, yeah. And if you see something, man, say something. We are still in a war against radical Islamic jihadists. So let's uh, let's start winning this war. Let's use that overbearing, overprotective nanny state government and police state for something good. Like getting rid of these terrorist scumbags. And of course, until then, be well, do what makes you happy, and above all else, stay alive. Peace. This has been a production of Big Ass Digital Podcast Network. God, family, friends, yeah, everybody sins A winner never quits and a quitter never wins Help folks in need, don't fall for greed A jealous man is weak, so think before you speak If you love them, let them know, if you hate, let it go Fast can be fun, but sometimes you need slow God is all good, the devil is so real So listen up, y'all, cause this is how I feel I won't back up, I don't back down I've been raised up to stand my ground Take my job, but not my guns Tax my check till I ain't got none Except for the good Lord of above I answer to no one See, I'm a flag-flying, Bible-toting son of a gun Yeah, I'm hell on the heart, just a rebel on the run Scared, don't know it, fear, don't feel it The truth is the light, sometimes you gotta fight Good beats bad, right beats wrong I'm a ballroom preacher and this is my song I'm climbing for the top, representing for the country I'm the people's champ, right out to deer camp Shotgun toter, Republican voter Hank Jr. supporter, let's protect our border To hell with anyone who don't believe in the USA Cause this is what I say I won't back up, I don't back down I've been raised up to stand my ground Take my job, but not my guns Tax my check till I ain't got none Except for the good Lord of above The weapon of my choice, don't censor my voice 
Hate me if you want, or love me if you can If the truth is what you want, then you found your own man I ain't backing down, I ain't backing up If you think like I think, then crack it on up I won't back up, I don't back down I've been 